What is up? All sorts of weird button problems. Let me mess with some buttons. Hello, dreamer. You've been dreaming for so long. Now you're waking. You're still waiting for the sun to come along. All your fantasies point in the things you can't see. You're caging yourself when you want to be free. Tell me what do you want and what do you need to see? Your dreams are your reality. Let's leave everything and go traveling. See what tomorrow brings. It's only a choice away. Let's back up and leave today. Tell me what do you have to lose? Are you living the life you choose? There's a place we can live like kings. Let's see what tomorrow brings. All right, we got the buttons figured out. So every now and then when I start it, I go live, but not all of them go live. I have five little sub buttons. StreamYard is really cool, but there's a couple of weirdnesses. Every now and then, some go live, some do not. Well, today, one, one went live, four were dormant. So I had to click, re-click, click, click, sometimes... It may be if I put weird things in the titles or something. I don't know if that's what it was. But anyway, we're live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Periscope. We're live on Twitter, Twitch. We're live on the Thetas. Cool. Uh, all right. Let me say hello. Let me first start over here at the YouTube because Joe was numero uno. Él estaba aquí 15 minutos pasado, pues bienvenido. Okay, Demayan, what's going on? Emmanuel, in the house. Uh, let's see. Scott, what's going on, buddy? P. Kelly, Darton Uphill, Scorpion, Todd Bishop, Sunil, Tom, El Paul, Sylvia, Sylvia. Ooh, what's up, man? Let's see. Wolverine, Maniac. That's two very aggressive things in one name. <laughs> Frank Leopard. Frank Leopard is like. That's like an aggressive thing. And then like a guy that like waters his yard and, you know, does taxes. Let's see. Tiffany and Leon. Leon, do you know where like Kipia is? It's a pretty cool place. My buddy was stationed there. That's the name of the group. Like Kipia is named after a place in Africa where he was stationed when he was with the British military. Liquid Smoke, Antonio in the house, Jimmy James, Candice. What's up, Candace? You just paid yourself for the first time. Bravo. Bravo, man. Well done. Dubai money. Wojtek. Bernard. What's going on, Bernard? Scott Hill. Never late, but never missed, sir. Ashley, what's up? Dave, hopefully, is around there somewhere. Nico. TS. Fish and Magician. Uh, Jimmy H. Cool. Nailed it. All right. Let me go over here. Let me say hello to the Theta, the Thetans, our human Theta friends. Let's see, about to take breakout. Scorpion over there as well. The real J. Cole, not the fake one. The real one. Cece Brown, TS Monkey, Claire Smith, Sniper Princess, Stress Relief. <sighs> Stress Relief. Cabeza de Termo. ¿Qué onda? SJO, Theta TV, 29 LH06. I know there's a meaning there, but I don't know what the meaning is. Cass. What's up, Cass? Neffers, Belinda Cook. Uh, what HK? I don't know why that always makes me giggle. Hulagram, V Relo, Andy Panda, Baykeeper, Gordon, of course, Solid Gold, uh, Buckley, Buckley One, Joe Pirate. I may say some of these names. I may be redundant. Redundant's okay. <laughs> Fancy <sea> Turtle. <laughs> That's good. Okay, GR80. Cool. All right. Um, Al, good to see you. I think we got it. I think we done got everyone. Okay. Let's go. Whew. 
We got through it. We're going to talk about all of the craziness that happened this weekend because everybody's like, what's going on? Why the prices are not? Everything's crashing and the SEC and the Treasury and the this, and it's all mm, varying degrees of bogus. But, you know, when you get enough news after we've had a bit, like two weeks straight or just straight up and to the right. So it's okay to have a little sell-off every now and then. We're going to talk about it. I will unpack it for you. We'll talk about the real news and the fake news and the new news. And yeah, so we shall return after these non-commercial based messages. Okay, so let me touch a button here, get a little background music. Okay, let's go into some of the details about the crash over the weekend. But first, let's see if there's any um, interesting, exciting stuff from our friends over at pro.cointelegraph.com. We have uh, their recommendations based on their Vortex score, which is a variety of factors all thrown together, and they do a lot of math. Some of its sentiment data, some of its Twitter volume, some of its price change, some of its trading volume, uh, market cap, blah, 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 just a variety of really cool factors, including any news bits, which they call news quakes, that may or may not adversely affect the price and adversely could be up or down or whatever. Okay, cool. Uh, they, wow, BitTorrent, now a Tron product. Ugh. You know what? It's an 83. That sucker gets to 90. It is a buy signal. Not buy, but like take my money, buy. Um, but it is not. But it's in that range, right? It, when I start looking at stuff in the mid 80s, I say, okay, it's worth having a look. But this doesn't say anything yet. These are just in that zone. Most of these may have been coming off of a buy signal. And so let's take another look. And again, you're just trying to create, just to get a bunch of information flowing in. So you might have already been looking at an asset and decide, oh, let me do some further research. Well, this is kind of a cool thing just to kind of look at it and say, am, am I going crazy or, do, or does what I think I see actually appear in front of me? Okay, look at that. Price change, NEO up 29%. Uh, it's going back and forth with Keeper, uh, Qtum, Axie, Doge. The Doge, hey, don't fight the community, man. If uh, if the community, <laughs> it was a really funny tweet. Someone was like, how come Doge only sold off 10%? Everything else sold off 20%. Someone was like, because the people that own Doge don't know how to sell. <laughs> so that's mean-spirited. Maybe true, but mean-spirited nonetheless. Um, so what, what can we take from all of this? Well, there was a lot of chaos over the weekend. And price change in and of itself doesn't mean anything. So we got to look at other stuff. So look at Twitter volume. We see Neo. Neo's on all three lists. That that piques my interest. Now we were following Neo whew, years ago. I own Neo years ago, and it, we were following it around what twelve dollars? I forget. I'll have to ask. Maybe uh, if Jared jumps on, Jared would know. But it was around twelve bucks. Anyway, it's um, you know way up from there. It's one hundred five bucks. It was over one hundred and ten this morning. So like a nine x. Pretty good. I mean, we've had a lot of good runners, but in the last year to do a 900% is pretty good. So again, it's it's really similar to Ethereum, except there's a gas token, Neo Gas, and you know it's up. Of course, 27% of that was today, so don't don't take too much from that. Um, Vthor, uh, this is the token that you get if you are staking VChain. You get the that's that's the gas token, essentially uh, the utility token that flows around and is does it have value well it, it they're sure talking about it a lot the, the twitter volumes up 335 percent woo woo okay uh district ox energy web token uma nothing super exciting there trading volume a lot on district a lot on neo a lot on nano nano had a really hardcore run the last few days um so it's interesting anyway it's just things that you put on your radar and the doge of course 
uh, hardcore run over the last probably week, but really you would say over the last three months. Um, you'll say, well, what is Doge? If you want to know what Doge is, it's a fork of a fork. It's a, a fork that was started kind of as a joke, as a meme. Uh, the guys that started it, they basically just wanted to do good things. So it's kind of cool. You know, the guys that started it, I read a cool article where they were just talking about, we just wanted to do good stuff. Like they gave, they would raise money through Dogecoin and give it to, you know, like they sent it for water treatment in Africa and they raised money for some kids, so kids that were dealing with cancer. And they, I mean, they did legitimately cool things. The token was too cheap to like, they had to really, they even had a NASCAR at one point that had the Doge on the, on the hood, the Doge car. Um, why do I say all this? Is, is there a lot of GitHub activity? Are there, is there a lot of, is there a furtive, uh, you know, fertile uh, development community and all that? Mm, no, not really. But you don't get in the way of a community that is vigilant. Look at all the people that got cracked both directions and with GameStop. It doesn't matter that GameStop's a bad company. And it doesn't matter that Dogecoin's not that interesting a token. If they, If Elon Musk keeps pumping it, and the community keeps supporting it. A thing is only valuable if we give it value. So if people give it value, it will remain. It will go up if people, if that value is suddenly shook. So I guess the way I look at it is, what is the $600 moment for Dogecoin? I don't mean when is it going to 600? Never. But when is the, well, I shouldn't say never. We don't, we don't want to be absolutist. It's unlikely. But what is that in compared to GameStop, right? GameStop was like four bucks, 600 back to 100 and change. So along the way, people made money and then it came back down and people got absolutely flummoxed, punished, crushed, gutted. Um, so it's mostly the YOLO buck. And the cool thing is, at least with the per person that's YOLOing 20, 50, 100 bucks in the market, it's unlikely that that's going to bankrupt them if they lose it so i don't know what the 600 dollars the gamestop 600 dollars equivalent is with doge is it a buck is it 75 cents and those people that are buying that chunk of people because it's going to probably at some point retrace because everything retraces and when it retraces um it's hard to see who gets punished and who doesn't i don't know i'm going to stay away from it but, um, yeah, if the story materially changed or something, you know, I'm open to any of these assets if the story changes. I just don't think it's really changed. I think it's pump token. That's fine. Um, what's up with uh, Neo specifically? Well, a lot of a lot of Twitter um, activity, and when you go, sentiment is important. You know, getting a community to be vigilant is important. Galvanizing that kind of the trenches, right? Get people excited and get them buying. Um, real quick, Dogecoin very likely continues to move up. There's a big – the big movement is the whole 420 thing. Um, so it's very likely to push and continue to go up even tomorrow. Now, I'm not telling anybody to try to trade this or play it, but if you wanted to, a way you could do it is through uh, Gate. Gate has 3x long and 3x short um, positions that you could take. If you wanted to, one could, if one wanted to go long or short against it, I would probably not go against it right now. I would let this Peter out, but maybe midday, late day tomorrow, maybe go the other way. We'll see. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Neo, I don't know. 25% move in a day is usually pretty dramatic. Um, but I would want to look at the nature so, so I guess the the whole the point to all this rambling is, is that Neo across the board looks like the most interesting of these assets if you want to really dig in on something. Um, yeah, so there you go. Okay, um, Steve, good to see you. Uh, Grimsel, good to see you. Uh, Katamari, good to see you. My Planet, good to see you. Hedino, Ocean Dawn, and Aaron Choi, good to see all of you. Cool, cool man. Okay, so let's look around. By the way, if you have a question, I'm, I've got my little boxes open. Mr. President, 
Good to see you, Mr. President. If you uh, want to write, uh, just put the word Q in a little dash and ask your question, or if you just want to write the word question or whatever. Sold all your Neo. <laughs> Mine says, sold all my remaining Neo just before the pump. Ah, You know, here's the thing. If you like an asset and you're in the money and you end up selling it, try to keep a little stash. I never say sell 100% of anything. If you want to sell 90% of something, but don't sell 100% of anything, keep some skin in the game. If you really loved it, then again, maybe you're paying off a house. Maybe you're paying down some debt. Maybe you're unwinding some leverage you probably shouldn't have. Get out of debt. Pay off your pay off your juice, whatever you got to do. Just, just take care of you, number one. Take care of number one so you don't step in number two. <laughs> uh, wheeze the juice. What's going on, man? I'm glad you love the boot camp. No, I'm not a part of that. Um, I'm not a part of that. We've kind of... Two paths diver uh, diverged in the woods. I chose the one less traveled. Yeah, I'm not a part of that, but they're doing a great job. Um, so kudos to everyone. Uh, Jansen, good to see you. And let me see. Have you heard Energy Web Token? I actually have. I don't know if it's good, Andy, because I don't want to talk about something I don't know enough about. Yes, I've heard of it. No, I don't understand it. Not yet. I do want to probably read about it because you're the, kind of the second person that's asked about it. Um, Steve asks, what do you think of BNB at this level still going down? Well, um, BNB is burning tokens like they're going out of style. They've maintained this weirdness by burning tokens. It's, it's kind of a disingenuous and I think a dangerous way to pump your token. I mean, can you keep burning the token all the time, burning, 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 burning to reduce the supply? I think it's a very sketchy a very carnival act way to manage to, to keep upward motion on the token. I think the BNB token is doing just fine as a token that you used going back and forth on their chain on the smart chain. So I, I don't know why the token burns are a thing. Um, I feel like more, more intelligent um, management would not do that. Let's say that. Um, you see people at Ripple burning Ripple, <laughs> burning XRP? F no, because that's their runway. That's their freaking runway, man. <laughs> They're not burning that token. The SEC might burn it. They're not burning it. All right. Uh, let's see. Nephia bid the kind of, God, I love the emojis, but man, there's so many oh, vowels and consonants together. I'm not going to get it. Nephia Bicafande. Maybe. Maybe I got it. Okay. Um, safe moon hype is pretty fun. Seeing all, yeah, the safe moon thing. I don't, I'm not excited about that. Okay. Um, let's see. If you were in Celsius, <laughs> would you only sell 90? Oh, that's good. I wouldn't be in Celsius because I don't believe in Celsius. Well, let me just say this I am open. I'm, Alex is interesting. At first, I didn't like the guy, I thought he was kind of slimy. And he did some things that were kind of slimy. And some of his people said some stuff that was kind of not true. Like, not at all true. Just lie, kind of grimy stuff. But but he has done some really cool stuff as far as um, giving some money away and helping people out and stuff like that. So I'm going to reserve judgment. And I'm going to be open to the idea that I might be wrong about Alex. There. I've said it. I thought he was slimy. He still might be slimy, but I'm going to give him a mulligan because he's done some nice things for the community, especially he's trying to help. He's matching dollar for dollar a fund to make everyone good that got scammed by that, that um, crummy fake Celsius app that, took, that, that basically harvested people that were trying to go too quick. And they put their private keys in and they got stolen from and blah, blah, blah. So because of that… Um, he said he would match. He's going to start a fund to, to pay everyone back, and he's and they, he didn't have to do that. That wasn't them that did it. That would be ultimate evil if it was, but it was not. And so he's starting a fund that he's going to personally match, personally out of the money that he's taken. But um, he's going to match dollar for dollar and try to pay some people back. And I know s somebody that got hit in that. You guys do too. And so, yeah, maybe Alex is not such a bad guy. Maybe he just seems like a douche, but maybe he's nice. Maybe he's a nice douche. 
Some have said I am a nice douche. <laughs> Do you think Audius is a buy now that the markets are down? Okay. Um, I think many things are technically a buy now that the markets are down. But you guys know how these cascading liquidations work. And this is another example. I think we're at, we're over $10 billion now that was liquidated over the last three days starting Saturday. Pew, pew, pew. The liquidations start. And they continue and they continue and the beats keep on coming. Why? Because at first it's the people with high leverage getting liquidated. Then it's less and less levels of leverage. They're getting liquidated or they're getting margin calls or they have stop losses that get hunted. So and it's and it's a bit of all of that, right? And so you just have to kind of factor in that that a lot of this craziness exists because uh, the markets are – mechanically inclined to unduly or necessarily duly punish people that take on leverage. Now, do I think leverage of going over to Nexo and borrowing 10% against your Bitcoin and going out and buying some other stuff, is that is that leverage? It's absolutely leverage. And it I guess it depends where you borrowed to determine, but but I will say this. Um, Nexo manages that leverage system and gives you a lot of rope. Sometimes they give you a lot of rope to hang yourself. And I know that everybody thinks they can do it. I can I can handle it. I can I'm different. I know more. I'm be- Well, maybe maybe, but I would say you got to have your numbers right. Um I I don't like recommending that anybody take on leverage because you don't need it in this space. On a day like this where the markets are down, if you have a few bucks extra and you want to go fishing for some assets that you like, cool. I, I did my fishing yesterday, so I went heavier into uh, Fetch. I went heavier into AGI. I went heavier into Rune. I went into – what did I do? And by the way, it was from profits that I scalped from VeChain. So there you go. It's okay to take profit. Uh, you guys know for Thursday or Friday, Kramer, he sold off half his Bitcoin, paid off his house. It's pretty badass. Um, so as to Carlos, uh, as to your question, how low do you think Bitcoin will go? Well, let's take a look over here. Let's go to the chart. The Bitcoin is at 54,701. My guess is tricky. Uh, I think we see the rest of today is painful. And we start to see a little bit of a a break in the the recent confidence of a lot of people. But we were at 64 three days ago. We're at 54 now. That is, uh, what, a little bit over 20% move? In 2017, there were seven big moves, three of which were as high as 38%. The smallest was 20, uh, 21, 2021. Um, And I... (laughs) Another thing I saw that was funny, they said, we haven't had a sell-off like this in over three weeks. Every time a few of these factors get together, it only takes one sale to push things into chaos. You guys get that. So what would be the one thing? Well, it could be one big block trade or one sell or one more person taking some profit. And that's all it takes to turn the corner and start these cascading liquidations. It first starts with the people that have big fat leverage. And if you look at the funding rates and these funding rates, and again, it's not the only indicator of chaos, but it is a, it is an indicator, one of a few. And do I still feel like we're going to see 80 in April? Pablo, I do. It's not a popular opinion, but I think the bounce back could be pretty shocking. But do I feel as excited about it as I did last week? No, Um, I'm actually not surprised that people took a bunch of leverage last week. I am surprised at how quickly it unwound. Well, be not surprised. There was a lot of news articles. There was all sorts of chaos. So why don't we, why don't I go through some of those chaos events with you? Oh, so real quick, not to, not to ignore the question. Carlos said, how low do I think Bitcoin will go? I think we probably pop into the forties. You know, 52 down to, say, 49 range. I don't see why that would be all that bad. I think if we can, cont- I think it's probably good if we continue to unwind leverage. 
just clean up the market, so to speak. But then again, this could be the bottom. You never know. All right. So what are some of the news events you guys probably heard? And these are the kind of things that spook typically rookie investors more than, than maybe the rest of us. And uh, we should have some intrigue for this, right? Let me see. Let me go. Let's go to some intrigue music because this is intriguing. Get it? Yes. All right. What scared us over the weekend? Let's talk about it. Treasury enforcement action against U.S. financial institutions for using crypto to, to launder money. So far, unverified dumpster juice fake news. <clears throat> Why is this? It, listen, it was a it's a it, it was a silly post on a on a kind of a scammy Twitter feed, and then the and it was all loud, like all in bold, and then the sources were in parentheses sources chaos. Yes, Chinese droughts is a little of it. That's one of the that's one of the real news. Probably wasn't solely responsible. Uh, Willie Woo's a little bit nonsensical if he thinks he can find a chart that points to China's coal mine collapse and, and a little bit of a lack of – yeah, I know. Of course it's ridiculous. Cyan, we're ridiculous people. We're in a ridiculous space with illiquid assets on illiquid exchanges run by a bunch of maniacs. You're GD right. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yes, source. Trust me, bro. Trust me. It happened, bro. Dudes, source, dudes. All right. So it was the Treasury Enforcement Action tweet. It went around. It was nonsense. Um, Treasury hasn't said nothing yet. So we'll see. Uh, but it looks like silliness. They rehashed the Turkey India ban, ban wagon uh, nonsense. They floated that on some, and so what happened is stuff started happening. Bang, bang, bang. There was a staccato, and it only again when that funding rate is above fifteen basis points. That's when you get in that range where people are paying a lot of money to service that that position. When you see on the other side of it, the ancillary is when you see a negative funding rate, way negative. Which by the way, it's starting to head negative. That says that the shorts are now paying a big percentage if that negative funding rate if the short funding rate gets to negative 15 basis points same difference they're getting punished three times a day for about half a point a day that's when you look at a potential short squeeze and this thing can blip upwards McNabb good to see you crypto gamer what up and uh, Anura Gnadi not Ar Anura Nandi or Anur Agnandi that's it Nailed it, I think. I don't have pronunciation notes, but I'm guessing. So, treasury thing, nonsense. The India thing, yawn. We've heard it over and over. What is the total contribution of Turkey and India to the crypto space right now? About eight bucks a year, maybe, maybe 12. India will be a big country for crypto, and they waffle back and forth. They threaten to ban, they don't. They threaten to ban, they don't. My guess is India doesn't ban Turkey, May. Turkey put out a statement that was actually pretty smart. It basically said, listen, if we allow cryptocurrency to flourish, it gives a, a, it creates a situation where our monetary policy has less efficacy. Yeah. Also, you know, taxing is a little bit tricky. Um, but you know what? People will – the fish will flourish where the water is most murky, right? So we'll see. Okay, high funding rates. We already talked about that. Um, so the funding rates were starting to get up there. People were taking on as much as 125x leverage, which is just stupid. Uh, and this is what happens. And first, it's the people with big leverage and then varying degrees of smaller leverage. And then as it goes down, bing, 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 bing. Even let's, you know, think about it like this. Bitcoin goes down 20%. And you've taken on, you know, let's say – Two to one leverage. So you're now down 40%, right? Because 20 is 40. And you start to get in the range. And 2x leverage is not that much. Like on Binance and stuff where they're telling you can go 125x, 2x is like nothing. There's a lot of people in three in, in 3x long and 3x short positions. 
So let's see. Uh, Adam funding rate on Binance is 12 points. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. So um, the funding rate does matter. It's not one thing you can point at, but it's one of many. So that's not fake news. That's just market mechanics. Okay. Uh, we had a week of higher highs. Everything was melting upwards. Everything was great. Everything was exciting um, because of the Coinbase listing. Then following that, we had a bunch of fake news about everybody at Coinbase selling all their equity. Uh, no, they weren't selling all their equity. Brian wasn't selling all his equity. Everybody was saying, oh, he's, you know, 90 percent most of those numbers are faked that was a that was a cooked up spreadsheet um i, I think brian armstrong sold 1.2 percent of his equity he just owns a lot of the company that he started so a few points is a couple hundred million bucks guess what he's effing rich <laughs> he's allowed to <laughs> let the man go buy a yacht that has a yacht inside of the yacht is that too much too much to ask you go buy your yacht with a yacht mr armstrong he's mr armstrong now he was brian the douchebag now he's mr armstrong <laughs> trying to get a job all right um uh let's see uh yen lin good to see you over on on the theta okay so that was kind of an, an, a little bit more fake news. And it's just one thing after the next. The Kramer news was not fake news. It was real news. He sold half his stash to pay off his house. Good on him. And then we had the, which probably the only piece of real news was the mining outages in China um, that were result. So there was a coal mine that collapsed. I think we talked about it Saturday. Anyway, there was a coal mine that collapsed. Um, they shut off a bunch of facilities. They shut off power. They were just focusing all their efforts on the rescue effort. They were pumping in air, out water, and removing, you know, trapped miners that were 1,200, I don't know, meters or something, or 1,200 feet, I don't know, whatever it was, they were down in the dark and they was drowning. So they shut off, um, I think it was near Jiang, Jinyang, um, which is the biggest, it was, I think, 65% of the hash power in China is in that area, and that represents a big chunk of you of the worldwide uh, Bitcoin hash power and that in it and it did take a big bump a bump down so I guess a hit down so it probably cost the Bitcoin you know mining ecosystem 20% of the hash rate so that's not nothing um, but again if you if it's like news event after news event after news event after news event after news event and it's like bang 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 Especially with some of the newer investors, you don't know what's real and what's fake. You don't know how to weigh the information. You don't know what matters. And so what do you do? You hit the exit switch or you panic or you bail. And or a couple of people sell and that creates these cascading liquidations. Some assets that have performed better take a bigger hit. Some a little bit more stable. Um, you know, yeah. So we'll go through the list. Some of these things fared pretty well. Some of them, you know, really got punished. Uh, it is what it is. So at least I hope that clears up a little bit of, you know, it's, it's kind of much ado about nothing, right? So there was a lot of excitement over very little actual news. Um, yeah, and there's and there's no direct correlation between the hash rate on Bitcoin dropping and an overall market drop. That didn't make traders exit. Now, what would have made traders exit is if they saw that drop, couldn't get an explanation, and panicked. And it only takes a couple. Zervon, what's going on? It only takes a couple panics, especially high up. Also, you could have had some institutional trades put on that were looking to kind of grab some of this upward momentum. And when they saw it turn out, they exited. And um, don't think that just because institutional players are parking their assets um, off exchange that they're not playing the futures markets and that they're not playing the derivative space. Um, you're going to try to grind out yield anywhere you can get it. Neffers, what's up? All right. Uh, let's see. What are the new requirements to be an accredited investor to qualify as an as edu educated investor? Uh, well, I think if you've been in the crypto space for a year, you probably would be an educated investor. To be an accredited investor, you have to have you have to be, uh, I think, liquid net. They say you have to have a liquid net worth of a million bucks uh, or like a million bucks in assets or something close to that. And then you're you're 
your household, I don't know, three, three, four hundred K a year, something like that. Anyway, there's these there's these requirements to for accredited investor status status. Anyway, um, let's see. Crypto Gamer says I would have made so much money if I was able to get the whitelist requirements. Um, but USA is always restricting. Oh, yeah, that's actually true. Um, we had to do all that junk years ago to get into these ICOs. And it was really tricky. Um, you had to pull a lot of shenanigans. But you could get it done, but you had to pull some shenanigans. So there you go. All right. Um, let's, see. let's see. Also, if you're a financial advisor at Schwab, Fidelity, you can test to become accredited as of – oh, that's right. That's right. There's a way you can – uh, you can actually show your level of education to show that you are an accredited investor. Okay. Um, so good one, Pat. Good save. Let's see. Rocky, what up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay. So let me take this banner off of here and we're going to boop. Let's, let's just run down the list. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to go into detail on these assets. We're just going to do a quick commentary on the prices You'll notice uh, the corn has already recovered just a hair. Now, very interesting. Let's look at the Bitcoin over the last 30 days. Okay. Today, we're down about a percent. Most of the damage was yesterday and the day before. 8% on the week. That's a pretty good hit. 7% <clears throat> on the month, though. Let's think about that. We're down 8% on the week, but only 7 that means the most of this damage just happened in the last seven days. Okay. We're still clocking even after the chaos. Oh my God, the sky is falling. It's all over. Fin it's, it didn't work. Guys, pack it up. We gave this crypto thing a run. It's finished. Still up 675% on the year. It's a 6.7, almost a 7X. You think there's any other markets where people are clocking these kind of numbers? Maybe cartel drug trade but not in any legitimate markets and not with any consistency. So no one's leaving, no one's exiting. The only people that have got exited are people that had excessive leverage and they're just blown up. But a lot of times too, even when those positions get blown up, there's a, there, most people, they're not putting their entire life savings on the line. What they're doing is they're putting tiny positions with a lot of leverage. You know, you could have, you know, just think about it. If you had a dollar, a one dollar position, this is nonsense. But if you had a one dollar position with 125x leverage, and you went up 10 percent, woohoo! You made some money. But if you go down, you know, a frac, you know, point six eight seven percent, then the whole thing's blown up. But you only risk the dollar. So you can still have all these cascading liquidations and all this kind of blow up in the futures market. All this leverage can unwind. And it doesn't necessarily mean that a bunch of people got bankrupt. It could mean that a bunch of people all lost a little bit of money, right? So leverage doesn't – there's excessive leverage proportionate to your balance sheet, and then there's leverage. And that's where, that's where it gets sticky is knowing what's wh – where the balance is. I mean when you open a business, you take on debt. That's leverage. Um, but you're not gambling, I would say, as much. Some people would probably say more, but you're not gambling as much. The crypto space – there is Bitcoin, and then there is a bunch of lottery tickets. That's just kind of the reality of it, but it, it is what it is. Okay, Ethereum. Well, Ethereum is really basically just barely down for the day. It's technically up for the week. It's up for the month. It's up for the year. Ethereum's doing fine, right? It's not 2,400, 2,500, but you know what? Still in technical kind of price discovery mode. We haven't been this high. So, you know, since when we just cracked through the all time highs, we pushed through 1400 and kind of ran all the way up. So we're back. We're still in that range. So Ethereum may have problems. Ethereum does have problems. They got 999 problems, but price is not one of them. <laughs> Ethereum, fine. Uh, Cardano took some damage, but did they? This thing was 30 cents coming into the year. It's a buck 21. It's down four and a half on the day, six on the week, but only four on the month. Meaning you take today off of it and it's, it's actually still up on the month, up on the year, a 33 X smart contracts are coming. Yawn, uh, polka dot 
It was three bucks. Less than a year in June, it was three bucks. June, July. It was down 6% today. It's down 13 on the week. It's only down 11. You notice a trend? The weekly shows where the punishment was. The monthly says, eh, not so much. Plus, Polkadot, we're approaching June. We're approaching the parachain offering, the, the, the auctions, the, 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 you know, the rollout of, of, of the whole reason that Polka, you know, all of that Gavin Wood envisions, at least in this kind of, in his real MVP, right? Where you can actually, you know, use utility and, and quasi adoption. That happens in June. I think Polka Dot's a really good buy right now, not advice. Just saying, just from one bro to the next, I think Polka Dot's a really good buy in this range. I think probably we will look back and we will say, Ethereum under 3,000 was great. Bitcoin under 60 was great. Cardano under buck 50 was great. Dot under 40. V-Chain seems quasi-scammy. And I only say this because the things that they're purporting to do, nothing has changed. There's no new big fancy agreements. There's no new deals, and there is definitely – like 100% this, is, this was the result of a pump group. Now, I saw a guy analyze it on YouTube, whatever that means, and he's been following it for years. And he says, yes, this is a scammy pump. VeChain should not be this price. VeChain, but he believes the value of VeChain should be 50 cents to a dollar. So he said, yes, this is a scammy pump. This is inorganic. This 80% last week is inorganic. Yeah, duh. But – he believes that the value, and this is where you get into the kind of nebulous little value arguments. He believes the value is 50, to, 50 cents to a dollar. I do not necessarily agree with that. Me personally, I kind of thought 10 cents was fair. And it moved up real fast. And I took profit real fast. I followed my rules. I got, a, I think, 11 and change cents, 23 cents. So I kind of – I exited a little bit higher than this over the weekend, like 20 – no, no, it wasn't the weekend. It was Thursday or Friday. Anyway, whatever it was, I took my next exit. So I did a 20% exit at a 10x, and then I did another 10% exit at, uh, at right around here. So that was at my, at my second, right? So I took profit, and I redeployed that in Fetch. And AGI, and I'm going to continue to build those positions. Also, also Rune, uh, protocol layer that I didn't have a lot of exposure to, so I'm building into that. Theta, Theta took a pretty good hit, but not on the monthly. And by the way, look at VeChain on the monthly. Look at on the weekly, 80% on the monthly, 161. VeChain don't give a damn. Theta, um, Theta has pushed their mainnet launch. That's another thing that's happening in June. So think about what you have in June, just real quick. In June, um, Cardano does their code freeze. Um, the Pioneer program, the Plus Pioneer program has already started. Uh, people are starting to write smart contracts in the test environment and in the playground. And then they're going to do a code freeze end of June. They're going to roll out over the next six weeks to all the exchanges. And then Cardano actually has smart contracts. June, the parachain offering. We're going to see what the ecosystem of Polkadot looks like. Wink, wink, AR chain. AR weave. V chain, we don't know. Theta, their main net was pushed back to June. You guys should be hearing June, hearing June over and over and over. We're just past mid April. Dude, June is going to be fun. June is going to be awesome. I wonder when, when the anticipation of June gets priced in. May? Maybe. I don't know. So I'm excited. So I don't mind this chaos. I likes it. Filecoin. Oh, by the way, if you play the options markets and you play futures, they're going to be opening mini futures contracts for Bitcoin and Ethereum, both the CME and the CBOE. You don't think that's going to be big? Hold on. It's just setting the framework for an ETF for Bitcoin. I think the people that know already know. That's why all these people are piling on to, to list, to go after um, listing an ETF. They already know. My, my guess is 
um, Van Eck Van, Van is the first one through the gate, and then whoosh, they all come pouring in. Um, okay. Let me see. Uh, Grimsel, what's up? Uh, Woody, what up? Okay. So <clears throat> let me continue. Um, so June, 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 a lot of stuff in June. Filecoin is about to do a, a – I believe it's a backwards compatible hard fork, but, but don't quote me on that. But – uh, price wise, um, did they get beat up? They're down a little bit, but they had a big run this month. Remember, eighty three percent on the month, so they're down three on the week, but they're up on the today. Um, that's nothing. Filecoin doesn't care. Filecoin got up to two hundred and thirty bucks about a week and a half ago. Two thirty. I dumped a little bitty bit at because I was well in the money because I think I got this thing at five bucks. So I took profit at two hundred. And I bought back at 170. Mm, I'd have to check, but it was right around 170. I'd have, I was in, I went from Ethereum, so it's not quite as clear exactly where, but it was right around 170, 171. Anyway, my point is um, decentralized file storage, cool, and it didn't take too much price damage. They have a fork coming. I don't know what that means. Maybe that excites people, maybe it doesn't. They're going to be new functionality. Um, but they seem to be getting decentralized file storage correctly. And their valuation is stupid. I mean, they're – I forget the, the way they use these metrics, but there's something like $450 billion valuation of, the, of like the network. It's pretty intense. So it's something you guys might want to look at. Um, let me see. Uh, Cosmos – Cosmos took a hit. It was it was starting to climb. It had, it had gotten up pretty good and then pff, pretty much gave it all back. When? Gave it all back in the last week. As you can tell, down nine today, 11 on the week, 11 on the month, meaning most of this happened yesterday. It gave up the ghost yesterday. Um, kind of a big hit. It means when you see these assets take a big hit, it's typically the less liquid assets where when a couple of people hit the door, there's just not enough. There's not enough to absorb it. There's not enough buyers to absorb it. And it and it does kind of tell you mm, maybe it's not as um, vibrant a buying environment as I thought it was. There aren't as many people that are like-minded, right? Like maybe not everybody agrees it's cool. Um, so we'll see. Let's take a look. Uh, Philippe. Oh, Philippe, what's going on, buddy? Question. Chainlink. Uh, new white paper 2.0 uh, puts it back on your radar. No. It doesn't. Um, this is a Johnny come lately. This is Sergey realizing panicking and making a huge pivot. Now that doesn't mean that the pivot's not good. It just means to me, Chainlink finally admitted what we have all known, and that is that Chainlink, the idea of oracles in and of themselves, are not very interesting. You can spin up oracles and oracle networks anywhere and everywhere. There's nothing new and unique about them. Right? You need them for smart contract information, you know, to, to plug information in smart contracts so they can, you know, fire off their contracts in a reliable way, right? You have to inject data and that's what these oracles do and they need to be trusted so that that data is accurate, right? So you're paying a dividend when you're supposed to or you're paying, you know, a, a last, a, a, a will and testament. You're paying the people correctly because the dude is actually dead, not living in India, partying. Okay, that being said, so, so the, here's what the pivot means to me. The pivot is an admission that the that chain link as it was was not going to be sustainable, or at least was going to see such ugly margin erosion as Polkadot and Cardano and Cosmos and Avalanche and out as they all come out releasing their own oracles. Right, that makes sense. I will give it to Sergey. Now, he and that whole community are very sketchy. They have a ton of tokens. They sell them as fast as they can, or at least they were, um, which was always a sign to me that it was a very sketchy group, which is fine. I sold out. I got my 10X. I'm happy. That's one where I sold everything because I felt like it was kind of um, useless. But with the pivot, they're trying to go into DeFi and do some other things. Is it a Johnny come lately? Yeah. I mean, I would have only been marginally more surprised if they said they were coming out with NFTs the chain link NFT marketplace, but no, they want to go, they want to go heavy into DeFi. But I think that maybe they're a year late. And so I, I don't think they'll make 
it doesn't seem like they'll make a meaningful dent in DeFi, but you never know. He's a smart, he's a smart dude. They have they I won't I will say this. While I don't think what they did is very interesting, and I think that most of Chainlink is marketing and most of it's just beating drums and they have a vigilant community of of you know morons. Um, but but um they're not idiots. And maybe they see a way to skin the DeFi space that maybe other people haven't seen. I doubt it, but maybe. They're certainly great marketers. So there you go. So is it for me? No way. <clears throat> nope. Because they're sketchy. So even if they're really smart, they're sketchy. So I would probably just wait, see if they put a product out that makes sense. But to me, it's just an admission that they blew it. All right. Um, okay, cool. Let's see. Rocky, what's going on? Let me see. Uh, do you persuade? Uh, do taxes persuade you in your trading decisions? If you bank in crypto, do you put aside cash or take out crypto to pay taxes? Well, I think there's more velocity in the digital asset space. So when it comes time to pay a tax burden, you would just sell some crypto and pay your taxes. I think um, there may be other ways to do it. Um, you may also look at borrowing against your crypto as an exit. Um, a non-tax exit, but if you're trading, yeah, you're incurring, or at least you're supposed to be, depending on the tax structure. If you live in Europe, a lot of places in Europe, as long as you're not an, an institutional or professional trader, right? If you're in and out of a position once or twice, you're not a professional trader. Those are not taxable events if you hold the assets for more than a year. But if you are in the United States and you have an appreciation in a trade, right? You made currency units equated back to U.S. dollars. You have a tax taxable moment. Uh, there's an implication to that. But would I want to just hold dollars? No, because that's the reason I'm in crypto, because dollars suck. So I would say keep the keep the crypto. And especially if you have, you know, a lot of this stuff that you can stake and you can just get paid yield to own it. Get paid yield to own it. And yeah, pay the tax man. You don't need to dodge tax man. And if you really want to dodge tax man, don't dodge the tax man. Just go to a better tax structure. Go to a place where the tax environment makes more sense, right? I don't, I'm not saying go to Puerto Rico, but there's ways you could, you know, you can navigate that. But you don't want to get in tax trouble, right? You don't want to do all this and make all this money and then give it all back and penalties and fees and just get gutted. Pay the tax man. Who cares? That's why give some of the 200 to 700 percent a year. <laughs> Let's give him his money. Uh, let's see. Use a crypto visa. Yeah, you could. You could. All right. Let me see. Uh, Trough mob. What's going on? Uh, Sebi Seb. What up? And uh, tool, 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 Paul RX. Oh, I know it means something. I'm wondering if the RX has to do with like Tulpa, uh, like prescription medicine, like RX, like uh, something like that, maybe. All right. Uh, I'll wrap this up. Anyway, I wanted to go through those main assets. There was a couple of notables. One notable was uh, Decentraland. Decentraland held on a lot stronger than I thought it would. It got beat up, but it's still up on the month, up on the week, and really only just down yesterday. It got up to a buck fifty. It's only been over. It's only been over a dollar for like a few weeks. Um, Holochain, oddly, had such a run this month that even with the 7% yesterday and the 15% over the last week, it's still up almost 100%. Kudos. Um, Chili's. Chili's is basically flat, right? Down five, up three, down four, pretty flat, but up on, you know, an 82X on the year. Pretty cool. Uh, some other notables. Engine got punished. Graph got punished. Graph got punished. Uh, Nexo. Resilient, dude. Resilient. It did get up to about 380, but you know what? It's still up nine on the week, 20 on 21% on the month. And you got to own it to borrow. You got to own it to keep your, um, to keep your interest rates high. If you want them to get that platinum or gold status. And there's many reasons you got to own the Nexo token. So well done for the people over at Nexo. IOST held up real well, still up 40 on the month, 26. It basically just had a bad day. Um, and this thing's only been over five cents just a few times, and it's been holding. Um, Rune, the Rune, Thorchain. 
I'm not going to say anything. We're going to go. We're going to take a deeper look at this later in the week. But for now, suffice it to say, it's it's looking tasty. It's looking tasty. I started some of my V chain profit went into Rune, so I'm starting to build a position in Rune. Why protocols, man? Protocols. Uh, AR. <clears throat> I like it. It's actually up on the day, down on the week, up on the month. Weird, right? Green, red, green. Flow. Who would have thought flow has some staying power? Green, red, green. Uh, one inch got kicked right in the taint. And actually, it's funny. So one inch was another position that I I exited all of my original investment from one inch. I left my profit. It summarily got crushed. But I started exiting. I was trying to pull the trigger Saturday at 6 bucks and 20 cents. And it's and that was when the drop happened. It was Saturday afternoon, and it was just going straight down. <laughs> Depth charge. This is around two thirty. Oh yeah, God, it was awful. I was in the kitchen. I was over at Phil's. Oh, it was just it was frustrating. I was putting orders in. No, putting order. No, 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 no. I finally got these orders. I was watching it drop from six bucks. It it went down so fast that I wasn't getting these orders in till like five bucks twenty, five bucks thirty. Anyway, I finally got my profit out, which was you know dropped by like 18%. So sorry, gave that to the man. I kept my original position. I took the rest of it out, and that's what I used. That plus my V-chain profits that I had scraped the day before, I used to build um, Rune and Fetch, and which I staked, and AGI, which I missed the staking, but I'm going to get the DAO, the DAO, the, uh, the AGI DAO token. For those of you that are getting the, I know I'm rambling, but this is important. For those of you that are going to, that are staking AGI or at least had it in a private wallet and not on an exchange, you're going to get some governance tokens. Some, uh, it's a separate token. It's a DAO. Um, so AG, like a singularity net DAO token. It's going to be valuable. I think. Go look around, see if you get it. Okay, um, TBK is just getting punished all across the bridge, just getting kicked right in the dick. Um, OGN took a pretty hard hit, but but it is still up fifty seven percent on the month. So you can't really, you know, it just had a it just had a hard month. It was it was up well in the threes at the Coinbase listing, and then <laughs> the dump happened. But you know what? It's still a buck seventy three. You know. It's still up a, almost a 7x on the year. That's pretty good. I don't see them going away. All right. Uh, any other notables? That's really about it. NKN had a great month, up 300%, but he got punished last week. It is what it is. Okay. Everything else, you know, the whole market got punished. So there you go. Um, who knows where we'll be tomorrow? You know what? We're already up. Since we started talking, we're up about 500 bucks on the Bitcoins. So there you go. On the Bitcoins. And uh, look at that V-chain. Green, green, green. <laughs> Freaking V-chain, man. Uh, sometimes the pump can become real. All right. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. You guys stay safe. Have fun. Um, uh, wish we could watch the live events. We miss. Oh, which live events? Okay, um, for those of you that – I don't know if, for those of you that know what Money Matters Press is, but I'm going to give you the inside story because this is what happened. For those of you that were Raging Bull fans, Raging Bull, the production team, went to Money Matters Press. Money Matters Press is a lot bigger. They Apparently, they're like a billion-dollar company. They say. <laughs> Everybody's rich. But anyway, so the Raging Bull team went there. If you're a Raging Bull fan, go look up Money Matters Press. They're starting their live programming. Kenny went over. They're one. Mark Sebastian went over. They're you know, so that's what's going on. So I did my second show for them this morning. Um, there we go. This show, just so you know, this is live. You do know that, right? Seb, uh, Sebby said this is live. Day, this is the daily live thing. This is live. We are here right now. That's how I'm answering this live. Yeah. Okay. So YouTube is, um, by the way, for those of you that want to know what the YouTube, let me tell you what the, what the show is called on YouTube. For those of you, it's crypto and coffee TV live stream. There you go. 
And so, yeah, it's also go to the, go to my Twitter, um, Nicholas black 60. Cause I guess there was 59 other Nicholas blacks, but anyway, Nicholas black 60 on Twitter. And you can watch the show right there in the feed. You go to tweets. It's in the, every show's in the tweet feed, the Twitter feed, the tweed. All right. Um, I don't know enough about safe moon other than the fact that it's kind of scammy. Um, I mean, scammy in the way it's been pumped. It's part of wall street bets pump. It's well, not wall street bets, Satoshi street bets, wall street bets is limited to the recent interestingness in the doge. So wall street bets, matter of fact, interestingly, uh, only Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the doge are allowed to be spoken about in wall street bets. Otherwise you got to go to Satoshi street bets, which is a just clown factory. <laughs> it's just unintelligible nonsense. Anyway, there you go. Uh, Wall Street Bets on Reddit, Satoshi Street Bets, also on Reddit, Satoshi Street Bets on Telegram. Um, if you want to just get bombarded, it's like Bukaki, but with crypto information. For those of you that got that, yes, it's as gross as I intended it. We will see you soon. We will see you tomorrow. Let me touch my little buttons. Um, stay out of trouble. Don't do anything. My poor insolvent drunk, strung out of meth, grandmother wouldn't do. And uh, man, she was high as a kite this morning. You roll around the floor and she was screaming out about the, the, the Grim Reaper, something about the Grim Reaper broke his wrist. I, what does that mean? He can't swing the sickle. And I don't know, man. The chit chat. You know nothing about blockchain, we here to fix that You want the news on them new stocks, this where you get Only oh, grab you a nice chair, it's time to sit back and talk to profit Hey, 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 talk to profit Hey, hey, we, talk we talking condos and nice clothes and dropping Lambos I remember them night codes, we couldn't stand those we Tried to drive on them high roads, but had to stay low Now there's solutions to hard bills we couldn't pay for I talked to profit to get some profit, we couldn't change the top If it's a stock and I need a cop it, I'll wait for him to drop it Ain't no option, let's get it poppin', we chillin' in the truck I need some crypto playin' in my pocket, by any means I rock This is the profit with Nick Black, it's time to chit-chat You know nothing about blockchain, we here to fix that You want the news on them new stocks, this where you get Oh, and grab you a nice chair. It's time to sit back and talk to profit. Hey, hey, to the profit. Hey, hey, you talking to the